Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to be looking at the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified 6 inch scale Zartan action figure. Now, Zartan is part of the enemy side in the G.I. Joes, but he's not exactly a member of Cobra. He's the leader of Dreadnoughts, that's sort of a militarized biker gang. He's a master of disguise and sometimes works directly for Cobra Commander. He's a mercenary. So let's check out the packaging here. As you see, age is 4 plus, little warning, G.I. Joe classified Zartan from Hasbro. Here he is in the package, got some weapons, alternate hands, a different head as he makes a disguise there. As you see at the top, you see 23rd figure in the line. One side here, some different insignia, 23 again. Other side, here he is taking his different face off. On the back, here's a whole bunch of other G.I. Joe figures in the line. The bottom, there's a bunch of credits, and there is a barcode in case that helps anybody. I got my figure from Amazon.com, pre-ordered him, it got delayed, but finally got him today. So, let's go ahead and open him up. Alright, now that we got this figure out of the package, here he is with all of his accessories laid out. He does go with an alternate face, one of his many disguises. He comes with a shriveled up cobra head and a shriveled up hand. He also comes with a pistol and a knife. And then he has his backpack. It's sort of a cold storage device to keep his different faces. But before we take a look at the accessories, let's take a look at the actual figure. So this is Zartan. He's got this hood over his head. Kind of reminds you of a snake in some ways. Just the way it's sort of pointed in the top there. You can remove that thing pretty easily. See his bald head under there. The paint over his eyes, very well done. Looks very sharp, very clean. He looks sinister. He's got the bandana around his neck. He's got armor on his chest and his shoulders, but very soft, not gonna interfere with any of the articulation. He's very cut, look at those abs down there. His pants look very good. You can see the different wrinkles in the cloth, separating the material from the armor and the cloth pants. He can holster his knife and the sheath on the back. He's got some holes on his belt here we can hold these shriveled up items overall and this guy looks absolutely fantastic looks like we've got double jointed elbows double jointed knees his head can pop off with complete ease you can remove the hood the bandana and his head notice how much larger his alternate face is to his head but of course it's got to fit on top of his head so it's going to be bigger there's really no point to be able to remove his head not sure why they made it so easy just wanted to point that out Zartan here, being one of the villains, I'm always a big fan of the villains. They just look cooler than the Joes. Don't get me wrong, I love the military Joes, the good guys, but the villains are just a lot more fun, especially in action figure form. Now let's check out his accessories, and let's start off with his hood. Here he is without the hood. I think he looks great either way. His eye makeup kind of reminds me of Marvel's Iron Fist. And here he is with the hood on. Here's his backpack. My understanding is this is sort of a cold storage device to keep his different flesh faces in it. It's completely black, looks a little bit soft, not a lot of detail because of the paint job. A little bit of stuff going on up here. It's got a couple pegs sticking off the sides, might be able to hang stuff off there. It's got a bunch of holes here, you can definitely attach things there. And then of course, it has a peg onto the back to attach to the peg hole on his back. Here's Zartan wearing his backpack. Can't really tell from the front, but go ahead and spin him around. Here's his alternate face, one of his many disguises. Just like his main head, it's also bald. You can see it's got the white eyes, mustache, little bit of goatee. You can see how it'll fit directly over his head. Now they give him an alternate face instead of a different head, which is very appropriate considering how he does his disguises. Here's his main head. And here's Sartan wearing his alternate face. Even though it's larger than his head, it still looks very good on him. And you can also put the hood on when he has his disguise on. But let's not kid ourselves. He's not going to fool anybody with a different face wearing this exact same outfit. It's still a very cool feature for the toy. Here's the cobra head and monkey's paw. Both are shriveled up. A cobra head is very appropriate for someone who affiliates with the cobra team. Zartan here is sort of mystic. He believes in this sort of stuff. 
see the cobra head open. It's got a little pig here to hang onto his belt or backpack. And then we have the monkey's paw here. Very cool accessories. He can hold the monkey's paw or cobra head. He can also hang them off the side of his belt. And they can also hang off his backpack. A lot of different display options here. Now let's look at his other weapons. He has both a pistol and a knife. They're both completely black. They suffer from that same problem some of the other G.I. Joe guns have. All one solid color, losing some of the detail. And his knife here, notice has a couple holes up there. He'll probably hang off the pegs on his backpack. And here he is, holding both his pistol and his knife. On both his pistol here, the finger goes into the trigger very nicely. And on the knife here, his finger also goes into the little hole here, giving me a little more support. Of course, you can put the knife into the sheath on the back of his belt. And you can also hang his weapons onto his backpack. Here's the knife on one side and pistol on the other. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out his height. From bottom to top, he's sitting at about 6.5 inches tall, which is going to translate to about 16 and a half centimeters. And now let's look at his articulation. Let's start with his head here. Of course, you can rotate from side to side. You can look up and down that far. Very impressive. He can tilt from side to side as well, giving him a nice amount of personality. Shoulders on a ball joint goes out a little bit less than 90 degrees up down around notice how the shoulder pad is very soft it doesn't obstruct anything he does have a butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest area just increasing the range of motion here he's got a bicep cut below that double jointed elbows below that his wrist here can rotate and it's going to be hinged as well he's got an ab crunch in his torso traditional waist swivel actually it's a ball joint down there can rotate around pretty nice Legs go out completely do the splits, ball joints. They can also drop down, you see the hips, drop down hips. Go forward that far, back about that far. He's got a thigh cut, double jointed knees. He's got a boot cut, then his ankles here. They go forward and back. They can tilt and rock. Here's a couple of Cobra Troopers in the Outback looking for Zartan. They have a mission from Cobra Commander for him. And being the unpredictable free agent that he is, Zartan killed one of the Cobra Troopers and is about to kill the other one, and then he gives him his top secret mission. Just as Zartan is about to cut the other Cobra Trooper's throat, he gives him the top secret files. Now let's check him out next to some other action figures. Starting off, with some other Hasbro, G.I. Joe classified figures. Here he is, next to all the different Cobra figures I have in the G.I. Joe classified line. Although Zartan is not exactly a Cobra, he works with and for them and affiliates with them quite often. Then, here he is, next to all the Joes I have so far. And here's my entire Hasbro G.I. Joe classified collection. And I'll tell you, this is a great line, but frankly it pisses me off. I wanted to be a completist with this line from the beginning, and I missed the two different variations of Cobra Commander with the Hasbro Pulse website. I also missed the Fortnite Snake Eyes, which upsets me for a lot of reasons as I have all the Fortnite figures, but it's a story for another day. And then we have these Target exclusive G.I. Joes, and they're so cool, but literally impossible to find. I have never personally seen one in person at a Target store, and I hit at least three Targets every week. I was unable to find any of the second wave of Target G.I. Joes. Anyone out there want to help me out? Drop me a line, but I have no expectations that anyone can actually do that. I was very fortunate the first wave. I had some really cool people help me out and get them for me. But it's just a big mess. I can't even get all the characters, much less all the variations. So I'm sort of at a standstill. Do I keep going with this line? Do I not? I really don't know what to do. I wanted to get them all. But Hasbro and Target have made that pretty much impossible. And I'm not going to fully blame Target, because there were some other ones that I just can't get that weren't Target exclusives either. Here are a bunch of other action figures I think work okay to supplement and enhance your Hasbro G.I. Joe collection. 
these figures fit in pretty decent scale and style wise, at least more or less. We've got some Jazzworks Fortnite figures, Mattel DC figures, Mattel wrestling figures, and some Hasbro Marvel figures. In particular, I think this Mattel DC Universe Classics Copperhead works great for the Cobra Team Serpentor. Now let's check him out. Next to some action figures from different various companies to see how he fits in both scale and style wise in case you want to know which lines you can mix him with. Here he is with some of his Hasbro brothers. Here he is with some Hasbro Marvel Legends. Then next to some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. And here he is next to some SH figure arts action figures. And now next to some Mapex figures. Then next to some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here he is next to some Mezco 112th Cloth Soft Goods action figures. Then next to some Mattel wrestling figures. And here next to some NECA figures. Then next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And now next to some McFarlane toys. And finally here he is next to some DST or Diamond Select toys. So overall, Zarn is a very cool figure. His accessories are nice, his articulation is everything to expect from a Hasbro G.I. Joe figure. His paint job and sculpt are excellent, the different texture on his outfit, the hood has sort of scales on it, the pants you can tell, the cloth, the different wrinkles. This is another home run from Hasbro. I try not to let my bitterness about this line get the best of me. This guy's a very nice figure. I would rate him a good 8 out of 10. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. And I will talk to you guys real soon.